the day as they try to get Eddie Cheever out of the gravel pit and restart it after his contact with Eric Bachelard. They line up behind the pace car, Villeneuve, Bosell, third place to Farron, then Christian Fittipaldi, and then Brian Herta. So of the top five, four of them have never won an IndyCar race. Then Paul Tracy is sixth, then Bobby Rahal, Tail Bobby, Jimmy Vassar, and Andre Ribeiro. Well, now time to uh, settle down a little bit and freshen up and change out of his driver's uniform. We've got the good fortune of having Michael Andretti join us and is going to be able to watch some of this race and help keep track of it with us. Welcome, Michael. Uh, thank you. You just didn't see him at all, eh? No. I mean, if had I seen him, I wouldn't have been there for sure because I, in those situations, the guy in front always uh, gets the worst of it. And, uh, you know, it was just uh, it was a bad thing. I, I mean, I didn't know Al had that much of a run, and, and I just lost him in my mirrors, and I assumed that he was going back to the left side, and uh, uh, he was on my right side. You've had sun on the on the race course for much of the run today. What kind of effect do you think that's going to have? Uh, it's a, it was a little slippery out there than it was this morning, for sure. But, uh, again, for me, it was early in the race. I mean, it was only a second lap or something like that. So, uh, uh, you know, there wasn't enough time to, to settle things down, get uh, tire pressures up and things like that. So I can't really comment on the track too much. Well, if you could, would you stay with us for a moment or two as uh, we're ready to go back to green flag racing as they come around the carousel. Okay. And we'll go green at the end of this lap, so we'll just leave your microphone on there, and hopefully you can join us for a minute or two. We're sorry out of the race, but we do appreciate the opportunity to have you on board with us. We watched from your teammate, Paul Tracy's car. He had a problem coming out of the pits. He faltered. Was that mechanical? or? No, I think that's a uh, problem with his uh, left foot, you know, being broken. He was having problems uh, this morning. I guess they uh, uh, had to replace some stitches, so he's in a lot of pain. So he's doing a pretty good job considering. Well, we'll keep track of Paul Tracy, who sits in sixth position. In fact, we know that it was a go-kart accident. It wasn't an impact that caused the problem. He actually rolled his go-kart. He has his own 125cc go-kart. He rolled it upside down, and he was actually trying to run from the crash at high speed when he broke his foot himself. So it wasn't actually an impact with anything. But he does like to race that go-kart near his home in Phoenix. All right, now Jack Villeneuve comes around the final turn, ready to climb the hills, already taking her up to speed. Pace car clear of the course. Climbs to the top of the hill. Raul Boisel clears Carlos Guerrero, and now is in full contact with him as we go green flag once again. No battle at the front of the field, but DeFerrin is closing in, so is Christian Fittipaldi. Christian Fittipaldi takes a move to the inside. Carlos Guerrero is a bit of a factor there as they come around him. Now they spread out coming down the hill, but everybody's got to get around Guerrero. He is a factor, but in fairness now, look at Guerrero. He moves aside, and Dick Simon's car lets all the leaders have the room they need. So a good piece of driving using his mirrors there by Carlos Guerrero. Michael Andretti, when you have a slower car in the leader serial like that, that can get pretty tense? Yeah, for sure, especially uh, if uh, you know that leader's there and you got to get by him and... Uh, he, Guerrero actually did a good job on that restart. He stayed pretty close to uh, to Jacques, so it wasn't a big uh, thing. Oh, there's a shame Boy. for Ryan. As we had a battle coming up the top of the hill, Herta battling with Ray Hall, almost got Tracy, and then the course just got too narrow when they got to the top of the hill, and Herta off. Now Ray Hall in contact with Paul Tracy. It's a battle for fifth place, as Tracy was able to move forward when Herta came off. You could see that accident happened under breaking at turn five when Paul Tracy made a very brave move down the inside of Brian Herta, forced him offline, and we will have to go to yet another full course yellow to dig Brian Herta's target car out of the gravel trap. Gravel traps can, in fact, be good in that they'll occasionally slow a car down, but then you got to figure out how to get it out, and that means a full course yellow almost every time. There it is. Tracy already down the inside, slows her to exit. Look at this. Ray Hall gets up the inside. Now, at this stage, Michael, you might agree, Brian Hurt should have given up the corner. He had no hope of turning to the apex. And look at the trouble he got into. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, uh, Bobby had a pretty good run on him. So, uh, yeah, he, he, I think he should have seen that he was going to be out of racetrack. And, of course, what Brian did was break too late, lock up those front brakes, and then you miss your turn in point. 
Uh, once you lock those fronts, then you are steering straight ahead off the racetrack, over the curbs, through the grass, and buried in the beach. Michael, were you in Brian Herta's cockpit? Would have you would you have climbed out of it at that point and just given the corner away? Well, well I probably wouldn't have. Uh, I would have braked maybe a little bit earlier and tried to go around the outside. But I think what Brian had problem there with his front brakes locking up, and I think that's what got him in trouble. To be honest with you. So we should be going green here shortly with Jack Villeneuve, who's turned the fastest lap thus far at 136-2, the leader. Raul Boisel took advantage of good pit stop, moved into second place. Gel DeFerrin is third. Fourth is Christian Fittipaldi, and then Paul Tracy. Now, here, Derek, is how they went into the pits, how they came out, and how long they spent stop. And you can see that Gilles DeFerrin was the one that lost out. Boisel gained. But look at Paul Tracy. He lost two positions. But his eyes are out on stocks at the moment because that move he put on Brian Herta. Just watch him try to put the same move on Christian Fittipaldi on cool tires. Derek Daly with us. Also Michael Andretti watching from the pits and keeping track from television monitoring there. It's all up and down the pits. All of the teams can do that. As the green flag comes out again and Jack Villeneuve responds to that. And begins to pull away from Raul Boisel. But take a look at Christian Fittipaldi once again. Oh. As he tries to Farron. To Farron at the same time tries Bozell and to Farron gets him. Oh, a great move under braking. He was trying to block Christian Fittipaldi first. Who's in trouble? Look at Tracy. Paul Tracy, Tracy comes up alongside Christian Fittipaldi. Bobby Rahal closes in. Paul doesn't have enough to get him off of that corner, but he's very much in the fight. There's Rahal as he closes Tracy. And you saw Tracy look in the mirrors. He wants to know exactly where Bobby Rahal was, and Fabi gets by Rahal, and he blocks him. Christian Fittipaldi under braking alongside Bosell. They're very close in the corner. Bosell runs almost off. Christian Fittipaldi comes alongside. Paul Tracy gets around him as well. Now Paul Tracy challenges Fittipaldi. Never take your eyes off Paul Tracy on these restarts with cool tires because he was outside, he was inside, he got it sideways under acceleration, and he gets past Bozell and gets up behind Christian. Ray Hall moves left and right trying to get around Teo Fabi. On board Ray Hall now. Hey Michael, your teammate's looking pretty good right now. He's doing a good job. You know, I think uh, he's got a good car, I know that. Uh, it's pretty much the same setup as I have. and. Uh, uh, we both thought we were going to have a good race. He's also got the guts and stamina to hold on despite that injury and the pain, don't you think? Yeah, once you're out there and going, you don't even feel pain. Your adrenaline's going so much. So, uh, you know, he'll feel it tonight, though, I can guarantee you. Yeah, I bet he will. Down through Canada corner. Leader still is Jack Villeneuve. Bosell is still second. No, no, no. DeFerrin is still second. The old adrenaline pump yeah, boy. overrides the pain. <laughs> you saw Reha lock up that right front. But remember, DeFerrin still has that clutch problem. Except for visibility, of course. And that can be a problem here. When you begin to go through a dust storm like that, you're not sure where the cars are. Look at this, two abreast. Fabi gets the run on Tracy. As Teo Fabi makes a good move to the inside. Tracy blocks to the outside on Ray Hall, trying to get around Fabi. I'm not even sure he knew that Ray Hall was there. And he comes back around Teo Fabi. Superb move by Paul Tracy. Fabi had him beaten, took the inside line, and Tracy was not beaten. Down the outside, did it the hard way. An excellent move. Oh, that was pretty stuff by Paul Tracy. Well, if you thought he was in pain and it was causing him to go slower, ah, uh -uh, no way. He has the bit between his teeth and the adrenaline pump. Gary Gerald, you're watching from the Newman Haas Pets, keeping an eye on Tracy. Well, this is the point of the race where the cheerleading is really getting underway in earnest because on the radio, the crew is telling Tracy, they know the discomfort he's in, but they're telling him, of course, that with Al Jr., with Robbie Gordon, with his teammate Michael Andretti all out of the race, it's a great opportunity to do a job in terms of the points. And so that motivating carrot has been dangled now in front of Paul Tracy, and he's responding. Meanwhile, Vilna running out in front, his crew doing the same. They're telling him on the radio, you've got the fastest lap. 
lap of the race, and they're talking him through the midpoint of this 200-mile competition. But Paul Tracy has a lot to worry him lined up behind him in the person of a very racy tail, Fabi. And then Ray Hall. In fact, there's a good lineup right behind him just waiting for one little mistake. Take a look at Jimmy Vassar, too. Remember the winner at Portland? Right behind Ray Hall. Look at this as Teo Fabi tries to outbreak him on the inside, locks everything up. Obviously way too early and not nearly enough. And he got a great run on Paul Tracy, he sucked himself right up under his rear wing and then locked up both of those front brakes very, very quickly. Lost his steering and there was no hope there, Michael, of him ever pulling that move off. Michael, what do you think of all this? Going, wish you were out there in this. Michael Andretti is still with us, or uh, the action is so hot in the pit lane, he wants to go ahead and watch it personally. Yeah, I think uh, I think Paul, I mean, uh, Tail got in a little trouble there. I think he's flat spot his front tires now. Uh, that was a pretty tough move to pull off there. He was basically too far behind. And it was almost impossible to make that big a lunge and try and make that move. Now, Ray Hall gets an opportunity to close up behind him. But Ray Hall doesn't seem to have the raw speed that he needs to challenge these people. As obviously the kart safety crew have seen something on this front straight. And they are out trying to clean up whatever small pieces of debris that might be out there. That's the good news on a big circuit like this. You have plenty of time to do that. Jan Bikas, what's out there? Well, the report that we have is that some carbon fiber from Scott Pruitt's car. I'm not sure how it got there, but we heard some radio communications up and down the pit lane. Some of the teams warning their drivers, some carbon fiber, probably a piece of bodywork, and it appears as though it's from the Patrick Racing Machine. All right, continuing to watch, Teo Fabi, Bobby Rahal. Leader is still Jack Villeneuve. He's been right at point right from the start. And we've just crossed the halfway point. Leader at the halfway has gone on to win five of the last eight races at Road America. So now we have two stats to deal with. The leader on the first lap, who traditionally doesn't do well, or the leader at the halfway point, who traditionally does. Pick one. Fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. Jimmy Vassar, ninth. Stefan Johansson, tenth. Again, IndyCar racing more competitive than we've ever seen it in the past. Ray Hall again elects to take that inside line, and here's a battle. Big Mo, Big Mo outside Fernandez. Fernandez darts to the inside, gets him now. Mauricio Guzman has to follow him up the hill, but very definitely locked in a fight here. Battle for 12th place. Oh, Fernandez, this car is obviously very loose for him, gets it sideways over that curbing. That's a four-way battle, too, because you've got Parker Johnstone right behind him, and then Danny Sullivan, the teammate, is lined up fourth car in that order there when we go to fourth. Michael Andretti, we really appreciate you spending the time with us. We know you want to go cheer on your teammate and probably settle down. Thanks for joining us here in the Texaco Haviland 200. Good to have you on board. Thanks a lot. My pleasure. So there's the running order as 26 laps are now complete. Mauricio Guzman having a good battle with Adrian Fernandez. Fernandez says he really likes his track and of course finished sixth here last year. Having a